Zach Murphy here. Thank you so much for tuning into today's message. Today I'm going to talk to you about our freedom in Christ. And now many people among Christians are going to talk about the freedom we have in Christ, the liberty that we have in Christ. And we must be careful with that because so often people take that freedom we have in Christ and use the grace of God as a license to sin. And when you're born again, just because your sins are forgiven does not mean that you can go out and do whatever you want. So before I go any further, let me open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share the truths out of your word, Lord. Let it be your words and not mine. Let your people be edified, Lord. And I thank you that this teaching would bring forth much good fruit, Lord, for your kingdom's glory. In your name I pray, amen. And too often with the idea of freedom in Christ, the idea of freedom of Christ gets tainted with how we view freedom as in America. And so often the gospel gets tainted with the American dream and it gets perverted. And that's often how you have the prosperity gospel. Um, which you don't have to look too far to see that the prosperity gospel is very popular. Um, Kenneth Hagin wrote a book called The Midas Touch, which really goes into detail about bringing balance to the Word of Faith movement because Hagin, before he passed, saw these false, these false teachings come into a movement that he had a lot to do with starting off and he gave warning in that book and he went to some of those teachers and said if you don't stop teaching us I'm releasing this book and he released it. and sadly that book is not as popular as it should be today and you know I think that is just because people like to hear about prosperity to the extreme um, and if you haven't, go to Rama.org and look in their store for the book, The Meet Us Touch. Um, it's a very powerful book. Go, it brings balance to a lot of things. Um, and it's sad that that book is not as popular today or not as talked about. But I wanted to bring that up because that is one of the things that this gets twisted with our freedom in Christ, that we can basically... You know, claim whatever we want in the name of Christ. You know, you can claim a Mercedes Benz in the name of Christ, which that is not biblical. You know, provision from God, prosperity from God, is not, you know, having a luxurious, easy life. It is having what you need. You know, the Apostle Paul did not have a luxurious life. He had what he needed, and yet he still pressed on. And, you know, so often we twist that, but, you know, when you look at the life of the Apostle Paul, he suffered persecutions, he suffered things greatly, he was shipwrecked, I believe it was three times if you read in the book of Acts, and yet he continued onward, and, you know, but in America, American evangelicalism, we just want to claim riches, um, we're, we're so comfort-seeking rather than kingdom-seeking, um, but anyway, about our freedom in Christ, what does it biblically biblically mean to be free in Christ? First is Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 which tells us, It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. What is the yoke of slavery? Sin, the sin nature that we inherit from Adam. It don't matter whether you were baptized as a baby or not, you still have inherited the sin nature from Adam. And that nature inside you does not change unless, number one, you were born again, repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Spirit. And you know, it's an ongoing process of sanctification. And you know, it's why Paul warns. It was for freedom in Christ to set us free, and he also warns, do not get subject again to the yoke of slavery. Don't, you know, be unequally yoked with things. Don't yoke up with things that are of the world. Don't put yourself in bondage to the things that can lead you back into slavery to sin. 
And, you know, we really need discernment in our lives so we don't end up back in bondage to something. Because it is possible for that to happen. I um, mean, you know, some people think, you know, when you're born again, it's just easy. You don't have to worry about anything. You can do as you please. But, you know, if you live that mentality, you're going to open up the door for the devil to really work in your life. Um, John chapter 8, verse 34 tells us, Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. If you commit sin, you're a slave to sin. If you commit sin of an addiction to, say, alcohol, you're an alcoholic. You're a slave to that. Pornography is slave to pornography. Adultery, same thing, fornication. It doesn't matter. If you are in a habitual sin, you are a slave to that. And you need to go to Christ because the anointing of Christ, the power of Jesus Christ from what he did 2,000 years ago on the cross and the resurrection and his ascension, is powerful enough to break that yoke of bondage, and you have to trust in that. And, you know, when you get set free from that, you know, you just don't go on your merry way and, you know, go in cruise control of your life. You know, you have to get the word into you. Jesus says in the Gospels, I forget which Gospel is, but when a demon leaves a person, the demon goes in dry places and then tries to find a place, and he goes back to where he came because the house is empty, and... What he does is the demon brings more demons. So you know you gotta fill yourself up with the word of God so that these things can't come back in after you're set free. Those who are of the world, those who are unsaved are slaves to sin. They are complete slaves to sin. And we know that the wages of sin is death. Sin has to be paid for either through Christ if you're born again, or if you're not born again, it's gonna be paid through death which is eternity in the lake of fire. John chapter 8 verses 35 to 36 tell us the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you are free indeed. As part of our freedom in Christ, we become children of God. And we are free because of what the only begotten son of God has done for us. I want to read to you John chapter 1, verse 12 from the Young's Literal Translation. But as many did receive him, to them he gave the authority to become sons of God to those believing in his name. You know, if we're born again, we have to really renew our minds. Renew our minds on what the Word of God says that we are free in Christ from the bondage of sin. And once you realize that you are free from the bondage of sin, it is going to be very hard for you to fall into habitual sin. It's going to be hard for you to fall back into that. If you keep training your mind, filling your mind with the Word of God, and let the Word of God dictate your mindset rather than your emotions, rather than what the news media is telling you or what you see your friends doing on social media, if you let that fill your mind, over time you're going to see less and less of a desire for sin, and you will not be slipping up into these habits. And that's an ongoing process. And this is where sonship, as I have done a few teachings on, comes to place. It has to do with maturity in the faith. And you know, as you dwell with Christ, as you abide with Christ, and let His Word fill you up every day, the more levels of freedom you can walk in in Christ from sin. And you know, it doesn't mean that it's easy, this freedom. It'll cost you something. It may cost you friends. In fact, you know, you may have to change your job, <laughs> some people. You know, forsaking sin for Christ costs you something. The Apostle Paul could have neglected the call of God when he was called to repent and believe in Christ on the road to Damascus. But he was obedient there. He was changed right there. And it cost him leaving a position of authority from persecuting Christians to becoming one of those that is persecuted. The more we grow in the truth of the Word of God, the more levels of freedom we can walk in our lives.
There is, of course, an initial freedom when we get born again. And, you know, when someone gets born again, that is the greatest. That is the greatest miracle that there can ever be. A person going from death unto eternal life. That is the greatest miracle. A person being saved off the highway to hell unto the road that leads to life in Christ. Excuse me. John chapter 8 verse 32 tells us, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Why do you think it's important that our minds are transformed by the word of God? Why do you think it's important that we are conformed to every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? Because it is the truth, the word of God. Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the light. So if you know the truth, the truth is going to set you free. The more truth you know, the more levels of freedom that you can walk in. This is so powerful here. So powerful here. If you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You know, some people go to church Sunday and maybe their midweek service, but they don't pick up the word of God at all in between. They don't spend time in prayer. And they wonder why they're still stuck in this. You have to come to know the truth, deeper levels of it, and let it change you. We really have to grab a hold of that. We have to be serious about our faith in Christ. It isn't just a matter of repeating a prayer. Anybody can repeat a prayer and not mean it. You have to be serious about this. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 tells us, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart and proclaim liberty to the captives. Thank God for that. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. We need to awaken to the truth of God, what God's word says about us. We were captives to sin, but now Christ has come to set us free. Isaiah 61 is talking about the Christ to come. Jesus fulfilled many prophecies of the Old Testament. The world is going to do everything. The world is going to do everything it can to rob you of the joy of the Lord in your life. When you come to know more levels of truth in Christ, more levels of freedom that you will walk in, and you will be filled with the joy of the Lord in more areas of your life. The world is so busy slapping labels on people with Mental Health Awareness Month, you know, we don't need that garbage. We don't need to be aware of our mental health. We need to be aware of what God's Word says about us. Yes, I believe in doctors and medicine that have their place. I believe if you need help, you should get help. But, you know, we shouldn't be getting all wrapped up about awareness about this, awareness about that. We need to be aware of what God's Word says. We need God Awareness Month. Word of God Awareness Month every month of our lives. Because when you're aware of and live out that reality of who you are in Christ, your life has changed. You have to know your identity in Christ. And now... I want to talk about this freedom in Christ because many people are saying, and I don't say this stuff, I know I said this in my other teaching, but I want to say this again because I feel people need to be prepared. It is the world obviously right now is going through some great difficulties. There is some dark things going on in the world. You know, we thought the whole pandemic stuff was rough and yes it was there were people that died whether you think it you know was a natural occurring virus or it was something that was planned I have my own opinion on it but you know it did hurt people it did affect people in a very negative way and you know if you pay attention to what's going on in the world today it does appear that there is going to be a food shortage to some degree. And I don't say this to cause fear. I say this that as believers, we need 
to find our rest in Christ and realize who our true provider is because it don't matter what the world's going through. If we are abiding in Christ and he's abiding in us, he is our provider. He is faithful. All our needs are provided for in him. And it may look impossible according to the world's standards, but he will provide for us. So, many people, especially farmers, are saying to prepare for a worldwide food shortage because of certain things going on. There's some evidence that the elites are paying off farmers not to produce as much. There's farms and food production plants that are being destroyed. Um, now, I believe that we should use wisdom. I think it may be wise to stock up on some things. Now, do I, am I saying that you should go out in a panic like people were at the beginning of 2020 with toilet paper? No. No, that, don't live in fear like that. You know, use wisdom. You know, use wisdom. If you're able to stock up on things here and there, we should be wise to prepare, but not live in fear. Just because, you know, things are looking like something bad's going to happen doesn't mean we should live in fear about it. Yes, prepare, but really meditate on what God's Word says. Thank God that He is going to provide for us regardless of what happens, regardless if this food shortage happens or not, regardless if the economy collapses or not. It don't matter what happens. You know, a lot of people were saying we're going to go through another recession or Great Depression because of what's happening with the economy. Should you prepare? Should you look at your financial situation and see how prepared you are? Absolutely. You should do that regardless of if things are looking good or bad. You know, we should be good stewards of our money. But don't live in fear about what's going to happen in the next few months on Wall Street. Or if there's going to be a bunch of job losses or whatever's going to happen. God is our provider. At the same time, we should use wisdom in every area of our life. Every day of our life, use wisdom. Be good stewards of what God has given us. Prepare when we're able to prepare. But you know, when you live in the freedom of Christ, you will realize that you are not bound to all this worldly stuff. You are bound to the kingdom of God. We are citizens of the kingdom of God first, and in God's kingdom, He provides for us. And it may look impossible, as I said, but trust in the Lord. And, you know, I don't say this to, you know, say that, you know, we're in this spot in the end times or Christ is returning at a certain point. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying what is a known fact and that people should prepare. But most importantly, people should prepare and realize that our faith is to be in God no matter what's going on in the world today. We need to realize who we are in Christ and that He is our provider. Rest in that freedom. Because the people of the world, when you know stuff happens, they're going to be in a panic. Just like, you know, whenever the pandemic hit, they were swarming the stores and you couldn't find a thing of toilet paper. <laughs> you know, it's just, we really have to be in a place where we realize that God's word is so and that He is our provider. Let that rule our minds, not what, you know, the media is trying to spread about with fear. Yes, use wisdom. Seek God for wisdom on what to do. But ultimately, He is our provider. Not this world. Not this world's systems. That is all I have for today's teaching, so I hope that this has blessed you. I hope this, this has encouraged you. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share this. And God bless you, and have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning into today's message. For more information about my teachings and other content, you can head to my blog, steadfast-ztm.com. There will you, you will find links to my other videos, as well as blog posts and other resources that are available for you. Additionally, I have a nine-day devotional available on walking in the Spirit, which covers the nine fruits of the Spirit, which you can purchase down on Amazon. It is available in print and Kindle edition, and it is also an eligible book for Kindle Unlimited if you have subscribed 
to Kindle Limited. Thank you and God.